Hi, it's Mr. Damon. I am so glad that we get to be friends. Before we get started tonight, why don't you ask your mom or your dad or grandma, grandpa to come and listen to tonight's bedtime story with you. Do you know that our moms and dads do a whole bunch of stuff for us? They work hard to make money to pay for our food, clothes, and our home. They help us with our homework. They discipline us. And trust me, as much as we don't like discipline or boundaries, the fact that they give those things to us are going to help keep us from becoming, I don't know, maybe spoiled, obnoxious, and lazy. So it's actually what we need. So if your parent is with you right now in the room, will you take a second and just give them a big hug and say thank you? Do you know that your parents do all of this because they love you? And one of the most powerful things that we can do for our parents is to tell them thank you and that we love them back. It makes their day. Just ask them. And in the same way, do you know that God loves it when you tell him that you love him? It's true. There are a lot of ways for us to tell God how much we love him and how thankful we are for him. It's called worship. And one of the ways that we can worship is actually by using music. Another way that we can tell God that we love him is, well, just to tell him. When you talk with Jesus and tell him how you're feeling or how you need his help, that's called prayer. And one of the biggest reasons for us to thank Jesus and to talk with him is for how he left heaven, came to the earth, and died on the cross all to rescue us from sin. Jesus dying on the cross was the only way to fix our broken relationship with God. This rescue plan was actually God's idea since Adam and Eve first sinned in the garden. After so many years of waiting, the time for Jesus to go to the cross was coming soon. That is what our story is about tonight. So 2,000 years ago, after Jesus was born on earth, grew up to be a young man, and then grew up to become an adult, did miracles, healed the sick, told people about God's love, it was now time for him to get ready to die. He could feel it. You see, thousands of people living in Jerusalem could feel something too. People couldn't put their finger on it, but something big was about to happen. Everyone was talking about Jesus and whispering, is he the one? Is he God's rescuer? Is he the savior? Some people said yes, and other people said no way. But everyone knew that Jesus was special. In the middle of all this excitement, Jesus and his 12 friends, the disciples, made their way into the biggest city in Israel, Jerusalem. The disciples walked while Jesus rode ahead of them on a small donkey. When the people in the city saw Jesus enter the city gates, they went crazy with excitement. Tweets went out saying, okay, Twitter wasn't invented yet, but you get the idea. People were tweeting, here's Jesus. And other people posted on Facebook, saw Jesus headed into the city gates. Don't miss this. Or maybe, maybe, just maybe, people were telling their friends and their family. But by the time he entered Jerusalem, a massive crowd was waiting for him there. Some people cut palm tree branches down and laid them on the road. Other people took off their coats and put those down on the road for him to walk across. What a party! People were singing, dancing, cheering, and clapping as Jesus rode by. It was like a rock concert, but everybody was worshiping God. And as Jesus passed them, people shouted for joy, God is so good to us. Blessings on Jesus, the King. They praised God, which means they talked about how wonderful God is. Jesus had a huge smile on his face when he saw it. His disciples couldn't help but smile too. The people made so much noise and worshiped God so loud, the entire city got caught up in the celebration. Everyone wanted to know about Jesus. Who was he? And where did he come from? Everyone, except the religious leaders, that is. Because they were furious. They were mad and jealous 
because the people were giving their attention to Jesus and shouting and singing and praising God instead of them. Deep down inside, the religious leaders wanted the attention for themselves. The leaders told Jesus, tell those people to be quiet. But Jesus knew something important. We, just like the people that day in Jerusalem, were created to worship God. We were created to tell God thank you and how thankful we are for him. So Jesus shot back at the leaders. If these people are quiet and they stop worshiping me right now, all of the rocks that you see laying around on the ground will begin singing about God and his goodness. Whoa! Everyone heard Jesus say this, and it made them worship God even louder. This is the reason Jesus came to earth and went to the cross, to fix our broken relationship with God and make a way for us to know him, to be able to worship him with our whole hearts. How do you worship the God that owns everything? Simple. We thank him for who he is and what he's done for us. God loves it when we thank him, just like our parents love it, when we stop and say thank you to them for all of the amazing things they do for you. What are some good things that God has done for you? Just like you say thank you to your parents or your teachers, we say thank you to God. When you pray and talk to him or sing songs about him and think about all the things he's done for you, it makes God's heart happy. The coolest thing is when we worship and talk to Jesus, and we can do it anytime, anywhere. When you feel afraid, talk with Jesus and ask him to give you peace and courage. In fact, let's just take a second and do that together right now. Why don't you say this after me and let's talk to Jesus together. Jesus, thank you for everything you do for me. You give me everything I need and you gave me everything when you died on the cross to fix my relationship with God. Because of your love, I now get to live my whole life as best friends with you. I love you so much because you loved me first. Amen. Amen. Well, here's your challenge for tomorrow. Sometime tomorrow, take a few seconds all by yourself, wherever you're at, and talk to Jesus. You can say whatever you want to him. He just loves it when you talk with him. Have a wonderful night's sleep and have sweet dreams. And I can't wait to spend time with you tomorrow. Good night.